Hey guys, Jared Wesley of Live Traders and back for another weekly trading lesson. This week's topic, guys, is on chart reading as well as levels and depth of penetration, okay? Um, there's a lot of talk out there about what the proper way is to take a buy setup or how to know when a stock is going from a stage four downtrend into a stage one consolidation or back into a stage two uptrend. And a lot of that has to do with level or depth of penetration, as well as just understanding the overall picture of a chart. And in this video, it's a little bit shorter. Most of my videos are about an hour long. This one's about 30 or 35 minutes. I'm trying to shorten them, give you more of them, but shorter version so 15 20 minute videos i know your guys attention span isn't um, an hour long sometimes so anyway this video is a little bit shorter but still very effective uh, one of the things i want to recommend that you guys do when you're trying to read a chart specifically after the market closes or you're reviewing your trades for the day one of the things you want to do is take a piece of paper all right so if you have a chart take a piece of paper and cover the future okay why? Because in real time, real money trading, nobody knows what the future is. Nobody. Okay. So when you see a chart that's already completed or already finished, a lot of you guys out there have FOMO, fear of missing out. Like, oh, duh, I knew I should have taken that. Well, if you knew you should have taken it, why didn't you take it? Okay. It's because in real time, it probably wasn't as good as you thought it was afterwards right hindsight is 2020 as they say well sure it's easy after the fact so take a piece of paper and literally go bar by bar and cover the future and read it each bar to see what you really think of it so today we're going to talk like i said about levels and depth of penetration and what that means for your trading in terms of when you should be getting in or what is a more potent move versus a less potent move okay and then i'm going to take one chart okay literally one chart and i'm going to break it down to five slides the first is just the beginning of the chart then the middle of the chart then the end of the chart and then the whole picture of the chart okay and you're going to see how different things change throughout a chart whereas when you can't see the future you're like oh that's an easy no-brainer buy setup um, when you see the future but when you can't see the future sometimes that buy setup's not quite as good as you think so in my opinion it's a very important topic because i want it gets you guys to really look inside the candlesticks inside the bars but do it in real time at some point in your trading career all of these things that i'm showing you and teaching you need to become what we call unconscious competence there's four levels here guys you go into something not knowing what you don't know what that means is unconscious incompetence you simply don't know what you don't know the next phase is conscious incompetence that means you know you don't know Okay, the next step after conscious incompetence becomes conscious competence. Conscious competence is simply saying, I, I know what to do and I can do it, but I really have to think about it. Then the ultimate stage, the ultimate step, when you've really become a true professional, that's called unconscious competence. You just do it, like walking. You don't think about walking, you just do it. When you have to step over a curb, you just do it. You don't think about it. When you chew gum, you don't think about it. When you have to apply the brake pedal on your car, you just do it, you don't think about it. Trading needs to become unconscious competence for you guys. Okay, now it's gonna take a while. It's gonna take years to get to that level, but this is how you get there. By looking at the charts that I'm showing you and really drilling down inside the candlestick bars, bottoming tails, wide bodies, narrow bodies, where it's happening, how it got there, where it's likely to go next. And if you take a piece of paper and do it bar by bar, it will make it a lot easier. Guys, I wanna be clear about something here, okay? I'm seeing a lot of, and I might do a video on this, just FYI, for fun, okay, sarcastic. I'm seeing a lot of videos out there on YouTube and Google about, oh, you know, I'm in trader rehab, or I'm doing this, and I'm, you know, it's, it's I can't turn 500,000 into a million, but I'm sure gonna go take $600 and turn it into 150,000 in 63 days. That, Wow, that doesn't sound risky. Why am I saying this to you guys? Because most people out there, you're buying into the hype, man. You're buying into the get rich quick mentality. Most trading people out there that are teaching all these gurus, they should call themselves like Dr. Kevorkian trading. Why? 
because they're just helping you blow your account. They're assisting you in blowing your account. I wanna assist you in becoming a great, profitable, professional trader, guys, not somebody who's trying to just get rich quick, take $2 and turn it into $2 million. It doesn't happen that way. There's no other business in the world you can start with that kind of money and make those kind of returns. So why is trading any different, okay? So anyway, back to the topic at hand, guys levels and depths of penetration as well as how to read a chart properly jared wesley of live traders let's get to it guys boom so retracement levels and breaking charts down okay learn how to read charts properly um Guys, a lot of traders, and I talked about this at mentorship, you need to be what I would call looking inside the chart, okay? Looking inside the chart basically means when you see a bar, a candlestick that has a bottoming tail or a topping tail or a doji bar, imagining what it would look like in a different time frame, okay? Imagining what it would look like in a different time frame. Now, you should always have multiple time frames in front of you at all times. I'm going to repeat this because I don't understand how people can't do this, but I get questions all the time from people go, Jared, how do you put more than one time frame on your chart? Will you just make two charts and change the time frame? Oh, I know it's rocket science. One chart's five minute, one chart's 15 minute, one chart's the 60, one chart's the daily, done. Now, every time you go to take a trade, every time, it would be impossible for you not to look at those four time frames because they're on the same monitor. So when you look at the five minute, you'll be seeing all the other time frames as well. Okay, so always be looking at all time frames. All right, it's very, very important. Do not trade in a vacuum. But today it's going to be a slightly different topic about retracement levels. So the first thing I want to start out with uh, is a little audience participation from you guys. Um, and I want you guys basically, and I'll put a little number next to it or something like that. I'm gonna try to generally uh, get a general consensus from you guys, a consensus from you guys uh, about what you think in levels of potency on the next slide, okay? So let me first kind of pull this up, all right? And what I wanna do is, nope, that's not it, insert. There we go, text box. All right, so we'll make a one. And then we'll just copy and paste this multiple times. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is I want you to take a look. There are five, okay? There are five. One, two, three, four, sorry, six. I can't count. There are six charts here, all right? I want you guys, and we're going to start on the left. We're going to start on the left. This could take a couple minutes. All right, I'm going to try to keep this video to 20 or 30 minutes. I normally do like an hour, but today I don't have as much time. So there are six charts here. And I want you guys, in terms of potency, in terms of bullishness, potency, bullishness, I want you to rank these. So this chart all the way to the left, would you rank this one being the most potent or six being the weakest or somewhere in the middle? One, this is the strongest chart you see of the six. Six, this is the weakest chart. Three, it's in the middle. I wanna to try to get a general consensus. So I'm gonna take the general. Some of you might be a little different, but I'm gonna to try to take the general here. So I'm getting a vast number of sixes. All right, so six seems to be, let's copy and paste that, put it there. So you guys said that's number six. All right, next, this one, all right, next. In levels of potency, six being the weakest, one being the strongest. What is this chart right here? This second chart right there, okay? Wow, we're getting a whole bunch all over now. We're still predominantly sixes and fives. So how did everybody vote six on this one and you're still voting six on this one? They have to go in order, guys. Everyone has an order, okay? I'm gonna call it five because I'm getting a lot of fives and sixes, all right? Getting tons of fives and sixes. All right, so you guys are saying that's five, okay? Let's paste one up here, all right, okay? This one right here, the third one in, the third one in. Three, one, three, two, four, four, three, two, three, one, two, one. I think I'm getting mostly threes and fours. And wow, a lot of ones. A lot of people are saying this is the strongest one here. I'm gonna go with a three 
all right, on this, because I'm getting lots of threes and fours. All right. We don't have all day. That's why I'm not spending all day on it. Okay. All right. Okay. So the next one, guys, this one right here, this one right here. Again, this is I'm just getting a general consensus. If your individual one hasn't been put up, getting lots of twos and threes, twos and threes, twos and threes, couple four, six, threes, twos. I'm going to go with the two. Most of you seem to be thinking this is the second strongest. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, this one right here. Getting threes, fours, fives, threes, fours, 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 fours. All right, so the general consensus there is four, okay? And by definition, this one has to be a one, right? Even if you disagree with it, it has to be, at least the crowd theory says it's a one, okay? So let's save that for a second, we'll come back to it, okay? So basically, you guys, again, I understand that some of you have different, uh, levels or different numbers for these. I get that. I was just going for the general crowd theory. So six, five, three, two, four, one. Okay. So basically you're saying they're in order except for the four and the three here flip flopped around possibly or whatever, these three in the middle. Okay. All right. Let's talk about levels of penetration and then we'll come back to this. And if we have time, I'll ask you to re-rate it, re-rate it if we have time. So let's go to the next slide. Okay. So penetration and reversals, the larger the reversal bar is relative to the prior bar, the more compelling. The larger the reversal bar is relative to the prior bar, the more compelling. The level or depth of retracement into the prior bar increases control. These are the two things you need to understand about reversals, okay? See, in professional trading strategies, we talk a lot about doji bars, narrow range bars, wide range bars, bottoming tails. Then we also talk about location items, right? Location items. So if we take a look, okay, right here, this is considered the two on the left are longs, the two on the right are shorts, okay? So if we take a look at potent reversal, red bar, red bar, red bar, okay? So three red bars in a row, all right? And then we get a green bar. Same here, red bar, red bar, red bar. Notice the three red bars are the same, right? Identical. But what is different, guys? What is different? Okay, market's going crazy. People are coming. Common. Did Trump tweet something? I don't really know, but the market just went from 307.40 to 306. Um, okay, anyway, back to the business at hand, guys. All right, so three red bars down are the same. Right here, we have a green bar, and right here, we have a green bar. So when we take a look at these two bars, what's the significant difference here? The body of this bar is bigger. The body of this bar is smaller. In terms of total range from top to bottom, in terms of total range, right? Total range. They're about the same. Right. If you were to put this right here and next to this, they're very similar in terms of total range. But, okay, look at the level of penetration, the level or depth of retracement into the prior bar increases control. Okay, increases control. Well, when you take a look, which one is penetrating more? Well, this one. Right, this one. So think about it, guys. If we use the war analogy that we use from time to time, I use it in professional trading strategies, okay? If you can penetrate deeper into enemy territory, is that more or less significant in terms of overcoming your opponent? Think about it. If you can penetrate deep into the middle of a country versus getting stopped at the beaches on the shoreline, okay? Which is more potent? Well, obviously, guys, the reason so many, you know, you think about D-Day, not to get all historical on you guys, how many people got hammered on the beaches there? A lot, right? Because getting off the beach was challenging, but 
If you're able to get off the beach, get onto solid ground and move deep into enemy territory, that shows you are overcoming the enemy and you are stronger than the enemy. So in this case, the sellers are the enemy because you're looking to go long. So in this case, the sellers are the enemy, okay? So wide range red bar followed by a wide range green bar, but the level or depth of penetration here is what? 80 to 90%? I mean, it's like a 90% level of penetration with regard to the prior bar. As it says, the level or depth of retracement into the prior bar increases control. The sellers had their day and the buyers said, no, we're, we're coming in now, we're taking over. Okay, now if you take a look at this, now keep in mind guys, nobody here is saying, nobody is saying that this is a bad trade or a bad pullback. This is not the conversation. The conversation is which is more potent and why? Well, this on the right hand side is less potent because the level of penetration into enemy territory is not as great. The penetration level here is like 30%. Penetration level here is 90%. I get that it has a bottoming tail. And at one point in time, this was a little bit of a red bar and the buyer stepped up leaving a bottoming tail. But despite the bottom tail, they still weren't able to put in a 90% level of penetration. So it doesn't make this bad, just makes it less potent than this on the left. I want that to be very clear. And I like to use the war analogy not to bring up a negative topic, but I want you to try to visualize what we're going through here. Trading is a battle, right? Between buyers and sellers, the bid and the ask. It actually is a battle. You're basically saying, I don't wanna pay more than $59 to get in the stock. The seller saying, I don't wanna sell it for less than 59.05. Who is willing to pay more? And in this case, the buyers are saying, wow, it's such a good value down here. We're willing to pay up for this thing, okay? Now on the short side, it's the same exact thing. Just the opposite. The stock was strong, buyers were in control, and then the sellers came in. And what did they do here? They penetrated very deeply into this buying, this the, the buyers to the left here, right? So you're looking at, again, an 80% retracement, which means they've taken out almost all of these people, okay? If you look over here, don't get me wrong, all right? Don't get me wrong. This is still slightly bearish. Why? Well, it's the first time in a four bar period. And guys, this bar could be a five minute bar. It could be a one minute bar. It could be a daily bar. It could be a weekly bar, a monthly bar. It doesn't matter. The concept holds true for all time frames. Okay, so green, green, green means bullish, 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 means buyers, buyers, buy, means, means greed. Greed is in control. Stock gaps up a little and then rolls over. For the first time in a four bar period, Sellers are having an impact on the buyers. Sellers are having an impact. So that's good, that's bearish. But imagine if, right, you could take that bar and pull it down to like that. Wow, now look at it. Imagine if you could do that, pull the bar all the way down here, now you have an 80% retracement. You're taking out all these buyers. Well, let's put it back where it was. I don't wanna confuse you guys, but instead it's right there, okay? so. The level and depth of penetration matters. The larger the reversal bar, the more compelling. The level or depth of retracement increases control. Let's go back. So this is what you guys had originally talked about. Okay, originally. So we'll start on the right. This absolutely unequivocally is the highest or largest level of penetration into enemy territory, okay? So it actually is so strong, it breaks above the prior bar's high, okay? So now you're not just taking out one bar, you're beginning to move into the second bar, okay? Over here, we look at this, sure, all right? This is penetrating into enemy territory, but not nearly as much as this, not nearly as much as this. So when you talk about level and depth of penetration, really, you guys got one and two right right? This is the highest or deepest level of penetration because you're not taking out one, you're taking out one and a half bars, one and a quarter bars. Here, you're penetrating 80, 90% into this bar, maybe 75, 80%, okay? That's very bullish. But where in lies the issue here is 
the rest of the bar. So you guys got bar one here, or number one here, correct. The two is correct. Now we're going to fight over this one, this one, this one, and this one. We have four left. So you guys, the general consensus was this one right here was the third strongest. A lot of people look at it and go, wow, nice bottoming tail, a little bit of penetration, wow. Well, we have a conversation to have now, don't we? Right, a big conversation. The conversation basically says, hey, this one penetrated the most, right? It did. In terms of all of these bars here, this one is probably the third highest level of penetration or the second highest level of penetration, right? This is clearly the most penetration on the right. This is this one and this one right here are fighting this one for the highest level of penetration. But this one left a big topping tail. What does this mean? Well, it basically says, guys, this bar was penetrating deep, but it left a huge topping tail. Topping tail suggests or represents sellers. So it wasn't able to hold. So you went deep into enemy territory, but they pushed you back. Little bit, I don't want to call it a stalemate because you still were able to dig into enemy territory, but they pushed you back more than you would have thought. So clearly this one isn't as strong as bar or this one here, number one here or number two over here. That's clear. But the question then becomes, what is it as strong as? Is it as strong as this one? Is it as strong as this one? Is it weaker than both? So for me, I look at this and go, wow, these two right here, where it says number four and where it says number, these are actually kind of similar, right? In terms of where they finished, they both finished in a relatively equal area, one right here and one right here. But I'm gonna give the nod to this one, right? I'm gonna give the nod to this one, why? Because it didn't leave a topping tail. So I'm gonna take out this and we're gonna move this away, okay? And we're gonna flip flop this and we're gonna put that there, okay? Now we're gonna take this and move this over here, okay? Now, you look at this and go, okay, now it's a fight between this one, number three, and this one, number four, okay? Now it's a fight, so which one's stronger? Well, in my opinion, number three is stronger, why? This one, the sellers were actually in control of this for a period of time, right? This was a red bar that left the bottom. Now, some people will say, well, geez, a red bar that turned into a green bar is bullish. You're right, but think about this. You could make the argument this is battle tested, right? Because it was red and turned green. But if you look at here, number three, it didn't basically pull back half as much and then closed at the high. Sure, this closed at the high too. They both closed at the high. But this one had to go much deeper to find buyers, much deeper to find bargain hunters. This one did not. So for me, this one is stronger because again, it pulled back, turned slightly red, and then immediately pushed into enemy territory. This one turned pretty decent size red, then pushed into enemy territory. So this one here, is the third strongest, this is the fourth strongest. Now we have to deal with these, okay? I'm gonna go with five on this one because it did penetrate very deep into enemy territory but it left a topping tail. This one had very little penetration. This is a doji bar that says, we're still at a tug of war here. We're still at a tug of war, okay? Now, the other thing to consider, the other thing to consider, if this were a buy setup, if this were a buy setup, you have to break above the topping tail to trigger the entry, right? You have to break above the topping tail to trigger the entry. Well, if you break above the topping tail, that's a very bullish sign, not only because you're taking out the topping tail, but because you're also penetrating deep into enemy territory, right? This one to trigger the buy setup, you only have to break above the doji bar. So you don't have to dig as deep into enemy territory to trigger the bicep. You don't have to prove your strength nearly as much. Now, some people on the flip side, the contrarian might say, well, this is a tighter stop loss. It's better risk to reward. It is better risk to reward, but it's also far more aggressive, right? 
Because again, for this to trigger, you have to break above the topping tail and you have to basically take out 90% of the red bar, which is what? A confirmation of strength. This, to trigger the entry, you only have to break above this little area where my cursor is. That's not very much. It could just peekaboo up and fail. So in that case, this is the fifth, this is the sixth. Okay, so now I wanna move on guys. I didn't wanna to spend too much time in there. We spent 15 or 20 minutes talking about that. Now I wanna go over the same slide five times. I'm hoping to do this in 10 or 15 minutes. So I'm gonna try not to spend too, too much time on this. So retracement levels and breaking the chart down. All right, the bottoming tail and green bar after an extreme move make this a viable setup, however, because it broke prior support, which is the green line, prior support is this green line, because it broke prior support and had a 100 plus, more than a 100% retracement, the expectation, guys, trading is all about expectation. Okay, you can scalp a super extended stock if the expectation is to sell the pop. If the expectation is to have a huge five to one move, I wouldn't be doing that because your expectation is not in alignment with the chart. Aligning your expectations with the chart is very important. So the expectation here, because the retracement is 100 plus percent, is no more than a 50% retracement, call it 40 to 60%, then a likely failure. So if you choose to trade this, you have to know the expectation before you take it. So the bottoming tail is great, right? Green bar with a big bottoming tail after an extended move is bullish. So if you got in right here, it's a tradable reversal, but what is the expectation? Why? We already talked about the expectations, 50%. The question is why? Because it's 100 plus percent retracement and a broke support. But it is borderline climactic, okay? Wide range bars, wide range bars. We don't have volume at the bottom on this example. Bearish momentum slowing down, right? Bottoming tail, buyers step up. It actually technically triggers here, but you could have waited for there. So let's see what happens. So this is the first, just so you guys know, this chart plays out to the end of this slide. Literally, you're seeing this much, it goes all the way to the right-hand part of this slide. I just cut it in pieces. Let's take a look. This is what happened on this chart. It's the exact same chart. It's the exact same chart. What happened? It went about 40% on the retracement. Sellers came in around the 50% retracement area. Why? Because the stock proved it was relatively weak with wide range bars taking out support, but the slowing momentum and the bottoming tail says, maybe it's worth a shot. Is this the world's greatest trade? No, it's not. But the chart, we're talking about expectation. Would everybody just jump to take this stock? No. But if you take it, you could have still made money if you knew the expectation. So the retracement level here matters, a 40 to 50% retracement and then failure. Notice this little bumbling area right here, right there. Why, right, why? Look to the left. Overlapping bars, little bit of green, little bit of green, why? Because buyers came in before and buyers will likely come in again. Technical charts, right? Japanese candlesticks. We are using past price action to help predict future price movement. And that's what we're doing here. But it ultimately broke that area and continued lower. But if you knew your expectation, you could have made money on this trade. If you didn't, you would have probably stopped out. This is not a trade I'd sit here and take two R all or nothing on. This is a trade to go, wow, big bottom until let's try to get a scalp out of this for one, maybe two to one tops. But I'm going to raise the stop as it goes up because the expectation is for a failure and a pullback. Next, next, same chart, same chart. I just added a little more to it here. All right. Showing you the picture. Guys, first and foremost, before I continue on this, I tell you guys all the time. If you really want to learn how to read charts and read them well, read them properly, take a piece of paper and cover the future. It's so easy to get caught up in what it looks like. You immediately look to the right and go, wow, it worked. It must have been a good trade. 
Just because a trade works doesn't make it a good trade. And just because a trade fails doesn't make it a bad trade. Okay? It doesn't. So let's take a look at this. Stock gives the retracement we talked about and then fails. So it broke support. Now this becomes resistance now, but it broke support. Broke support again. Right? Goes down. So far, we're just in a downtrend here. Right? Lower low, lower high. Lower low, lower high. We're just in a downtrend. There's nothing to be done, but we're in a downtrend. But what is beginning to happen here? Okay, so we have a stock that has huge selling pressure. We're a bit extended at this point. We're really far from this prior support here. But we can see the stock is slowly losing some momentum. But we don't know this until we start to do this right here. See it right here? So right now the stock looks extended, but we don't really know how much further down this thing's gonna go yet. We don't really know that. It bounces up to what? Level two resistance or minor price resistance, right? The prior low becomes the prior high, right? The floor becomes the ceiling. We talk about that in professional trading shares. The floor over here becomes the ceiling over here. So far, the stock's just in a downtrend. So far, it hasn't broken the trend line right up to this point. There's no breakage of the trend line here, okay? There's no breakage of the trend line. If we pull back, oh, interesting. Buyers start to step up a little. Now, am I gonna buy this here? Oh, goodness gracious, no. No, no, no. But I'm starting to see Buyers are willing to pay a little more for this stock than they were, okay? Then it moves lower, and then this happens. We slightly, and I do mean ever so slightly, break the trend line. But here's your first true warning sign. You put in a new low, but it's what I call a weak new low. I want to be very, very, very clear here. This is not a buying opportunity right here. It's far too aggressive. It, if this pivot right here, if this pivot broke the trend line like up to here, right? If this bar right here went all the way up here and broke the trend line, then you got a retest, you could probably buy this, probably. But because we didn't really break the trend line, we are still in a downtrend. But this is what? This is our first warning sign that buyers are stepping up Sellers are softening and momentum is slowing. The fact that this did not put in a significant new low, okay? The fact that it did not put in a significant new low is our first warning sign that this trend is probably over. Does that automatically mean we can buy it? No, it does not automatically mean we can buy it. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Now, this is just, as I told you, we're going to get to the end of this slide. We're going to get to the end of the page here. Now, what do we have? A stock that did not put in a significant new low. It ripped higher above the trend line. That's two warnings now. One, you did not put in a significant new low. Two, you broke the trend line. So we also now have a slightly higher high or an equal high. Think about this. We didn't put in a new low, buyers are stepping up. We broke the trend line, buyers are stepping up. We put in a slightly new high slash equal high. That's a 100% retracement, buyers are stepping up. That's three things right there. We are looking for what? Multiple concepts converging in an area. The more concepts you get to converge in an area, the more secure, the more confirmed the entry will be. So concept one, not a significant new low. Concept two, breaks above the trend line. Concept three, puts in an equal high slash higher high. Buyers, 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 all three of those concepts. Now, we pull back, we put in another equal low, but we didn't put in a lower low. This is your first opportunity to potentially buy this, and I wouldn't have a problem with it. I wouldn't have a problem with it, why? Because you've tested this area twice, and you didn't go lower. Now you're testing it a third time and you didn't go lower. And the level and depth of penetration on this green bar is about 70%. That's good. Relatively smooth pullback means 
should be a relatively smooth move. But what happens? It pulls back again. So you could buy this, put your stop basically under the green bar, under the bottoming tail would be ideal for your stop loss. Buy it right here, right there. Stop loss under here. It holds the stop loss. Guys, what is happening here? It says, what is the next expectation? So what is happening here? We are going on a stock that was in an uptrend that is now pulling back and is clearly in a downtrend to transitioning into a stage one double, triple bottom retest and failure that looks like it should be bouncing, right? We went from a stage two uptrend, greed, to a V top stage three into a stage four controlled downtrend. But look at the testing, buyers, buyers, buyers. The downward momentum is slowing. Is it a little bit concerning that it put in a lower high? Yes, it is. Bottoming tails are good, but that's a pretty secure area. So now let's go one more slide. Boom. This is what happens. This could have and probably should have happened over here, right? These three green bars probably should have happened over here, but they didn't. That's why you have a stop loss, all right? It held the stop loss. The stop loss is the green bar here, You, the green line here. You get in right there, the green line is here, and boom. But because of where it's happening, and you're in over here, your target area is going to be this, this retracement. If you want to leave a little to, if it breaks the red line, great. But you have to respect this double top. You have to respect the double top. So definitely take some off right in this area where the red line is. Then you can hold some. Where would the next target be? Right here, right? The next target would be the prior pivot high right here. That would be the next target, right? There. But we just saw a chart go from a stage two to a V top stage three to a stage four downtrend to a double, triple, quadruple stage one consolidation, retest and failure and rip back into a stage two. This is how you read a chart. If you want to do yourself a favor, cover the future. Take it, bar, start on the left-hand side and go bar by bar by bar and try to read the chart. Now, why would I ask you to do this? I would ask you to do this so you can actually feel like it's real time, right? Nobody knows the future. So do it in real time, which means take the piece of paper and go slowly bar by bar by bar and go ask yourself, what would I do if, what would I do if this happened? What would I do if this double bottom retest happened? Okay, so now you have the trend line break, the bounce, the other retest, the buy setup here, another buy setup here, rip. And that's all of it, okay? Break of support, bottoming tail, tradable reversal, but the but here is what's the expectation? The expectation is a 40 to 50% retracement. See right here, the reaction says why the reaction? because of support to the left. See the overlapping, the fighting that's going on. Buyers and sellers are fighting here, sellers won. We go put in a lower low, we bounce, put in relatively equal low. It's a, it's a lower low, but not by much. Retest. Guys, higher low odds sell setup. You would never short that sell setup. You've broken above the trend line and you failed to put in a significant new low and you've retraced 100 plus percent. I'll repeat this so that you guys are clear about it. You would never short this sell setup. It broke above the trend line, which is bullish. It failed to put in a significant new low, which is bullish, and it put in a higher high slash equal high, which is bullish. Sure, you, it would have worked, but this is a perfect prime example of a bad trade that worked. Don't do it. I get these in the chat room all the time. Humana today, people wanting to buy it at 303. The entry is 300. You chased it $3. It worked though, Jared. It doesn't make it a good play. Just because it worked doesn't make it a good play. This sell setup is not a good play just because it worked. Buy it here. If you wanted, you could add back over here if you wanted to. If maybe you get a tighter stop loss, you can add a little lower and then rip. Okay. And I put this on here just so you can see it without any of my drawings on it. 
That's what it looks like clean and clear. Okay, that's what it looks like clean and clear. Take a picture of that and put a piece of paper. You should do this with every trade you take. Why? Because real-time trading doesn't allow you to see the future. Okay? Doesn't allow you to see the future. All right? So like I said, I'm going to try to keep this to 30 minutes today. It was a little bit of a quicker lecture, but I hope you guys learned a little bit about how to read through a chart. Okay? Also, levels and depth of penetration. It was just a teaser, so to speak, because there's a lot more on this topic in terms of levels and depth of penetration. Okay. So again, I'm out of time today, guys. Um, I have some things I have to take care of. So nonetheless, hope you enjoyed the lecture and um, we'll do it again soon. All right. Take care, guys. Have a good one. To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.